Hello everyone and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 3.40 and in this lesson we're going to take a look at the ring modulator that comes with Bitwig Studio. So typically you're going to find ring modulators on things like old analog synthesizers and typically once you turn that on and you flip that switch your sound would be completely changed around and so you'd lose the fundamental pitch. You'd lose that fundamental frequency and you'd be left with something totally different. So the ring modulator has always been kind of a scary switch for anybody new to music production. The cool thing about this one in Bitwig is that it's not tied to any one device. So it's not like the ring modulator is tied to the polysynth. We can actually use it independently or we could use it in conjunction with something like the polysynth if we wanted to try to model more of an older analog vintage style synth. Um, but we can use it on audio channels as well and on our just raw audio samples, which is really cool. So I'm going to explain what the ring modulator does and talk about how inside Bitwig Studio we can use this in very new and creative ways and in ways that have never really before been possible, um, at least as far as I know, with using ring modulation. So let's jump into Bitwig Studio here. I'm just pop in a little ring modulator. I'm going to leave the filter on there, I think. And let's take a look at this thing. It's called the Ring Mod. And you can tell that there's a lot of space here for pre and post. So if you want to run something before the Ring Modulator and then after it, you could do that. And we'll talk about that more as we move forward and talk about how all these boxes are working and that fun stuff. But for now, let's talk about the Ring Modulator just as itself. The first thing that's really cool and creative about this Ring Modulator is that it has a mix knob. So we can actually bring in just bits of ring modulation. And so we can introduce gradually just some of these newer harmonics without having to just slam the signal. So for example, if I play our sine tone here and our ring modulator is at 100%, let me just make sure everything is as it should be. All right, very good. If I turn on the ring modulator, we're gonna lose this 440 because our mix is at 100%. Or maybe we have a setting that actually is going, oh, we're close to 880, so we're actually leaving that 400 on there. But if I move it anywhere else, we will lose that fundamental. So just from my little mistake there of having the frequency nearly at 880, you might be able to start to pick up on some of the logic of how the math is working with this ring modulator. And as you guys know from my past videos, I am terrible with math, probably the worst person at math in the world. But the ring modulator is even something simple enough for me to understand. So with the ring modulator, we're gonna have something referred to as the carrier and the modulator. The carrier is just the fundamental of our raw audio signal. So for example, our sine tone is at 440 hertz, 440A. So that is gonna be referred to as our carrier. Our modulator is whatever frequency we set here inside of the ring modulator. So if we set that to 880, we have a carrier of 440, our sine tone, right? And we have a modulator of 880. So what the ring mod is going to do is it's going to take the sum and the difference of the carrier to modulator relationship and that's where the new harmonics are going to pop up and crop up. Meaning that if we have something at 440 and 880, we're gonna get a harmonic at 880 minus 440 which is 440, so we're actually gonna still keep something at 440. And then another one at 880 plus 440, which honestly, my math is so terrible, I actually have to type that into a calculator. I know it's incredibly embarrassing, but this is what happens when you you know are able to rely on a calculator for your whole life, it's pretty bad. 1320. All right, so assuming my math is correct and assuming I know what I'm talking about, with 100% mix, that is where our two new harmonics should show up. Again, that 440 is actually a new harmonic. It's not just the sine tone. So I see we have something around 440 and something around 1320. If I really zoomed in, that's exactly where they would line up with. And obviously because there's some other signal in here that's been able to pick up on, we're getting more harmonics and those are all going to be related to that carrier modulator relationship. So if we do something a little bit different, let's set this frequency to 1K. 
All right, and so now we should have whatever 1,000 minus 440 is. Pretty freaking embarrassing. 560. And we're going to have plus 440, which actually I don't even need to do that one. <laughs> Wouldn't that have been embarrassing? So around 1.44K. So let's set that up and see if that's what happens. Totally different timbre, totally different set of harmonics. So this is sitting at 560, and this is sitting at 1440. So there is a logic to this, and normally if it's something that's built into like an analog synth, for example, and you're playing your 440A over and over again, and then you turn on the ring modulator and you have a, a crazy frequency set there, you're always going to wonder like, why am I getting these different tones, these different timbres? It doesn't make any sense. It just sounds weird. Well, the truth is there is a logic to it. And so if, for example, you were to pull up like a frequency chart, you would know and be able to predict where these new frequencies are going to crop up. And then with the addition of this mix knob, we could slowly bring those in. And so it wouldn't have to be 100%, meaning we could create almost like consonant chords within one of our signals or even with our sign tone, we'd have the ability to do that. We'd be able to look on a frequency chart, figure out the sum and difference, and then be able to like hype the fifth or hype the fourth or hype the third. Or we can use it as I'm gonna use it here, just experimentally and you know, see if I can hit on something with the mix at like 50-50. So this is really a cool parameter, having the ability to bring this in in parallel. So here's our normal sign tone there at 440. And now as I pull this mix knob up, we're gonna start to see those new harmonics come into the spectrum. And once I go over 50%, we're gonna start to see that fundamental die away. Until we're up to 100, and the fundamental is just gonna be completely gone. It's just so interesting and so much fun to play around with this and see what happens with your sum indifference as to what you get to pop up here in the frequency spectrum. So that's with a sign tone, but this can be used with anything. It could be used with drums, which is traditionally a good use of the ring modulator because drums don't usually have a really defined fundamental pitch. They don't have that one spike that goes above all the other to uh, indicate tonality. So you can use the ring modulator at crazy settings here and it's all good. There's nothing wrong with doing that. So let's see what we can get. Totally change this guy up. Look at that. Now we have like more of a stick sound. That's really cool. So we created a totally new drum hit in just five seconds of messing around with the ring modulator. We could see what it does on the chord. This is what <laughs> this is what you would normally associate with a ring modulator, this sort of a crazy sound. But we might be able to find something that sounds nice. Here we go. So we've tapped in on something that's actually causing some of those phase relationships. So we're getting some cancellation and you can actually audibly hear that, which is really cool. Especially because we're in an audible range with our frequency here. We could just have that down the bottom somewhere. It's like we have an LFO effect going when we were using the ring modulator. So you can see this thing can be used in incredible ways. So, you know, look at that. I mean, just these little things that you can do and modulate and you would never think to use them in this context, but you always can. And I think 
for especially like electronic dance music and music that uses a lot of drums and that uses a lot of filters, don't be afraid to replace one of these traditional filters and use a ring modulator and just pull the mix knob up and back. Um, it's something people don't really do, but it's now something that you're aware of and it's something that could really make your music stand out and be a little bit different, a little bit more creative. Because if you listen to most music nowadays, especially a lot more of the popular EDM based music, you're gonna hear the same exact effects. Some of them we've already covered time and time again. So, you know, for me, when I hear those tracks, I just kind of get bored. It's not like I like or dislike the track. It's just a state of boredom because I know exactly what's going to happen. If somebody was to throw a ring modulator on their drum loop or on their kick drum and then pull the mix back, I would be super interested and be like, what the hell is that? That sounds totally new and totally interesting. Um, so just to throw those things out there, the ring mod is incredibly powerful. And soon we're going to start jumping into what we can do with these pre and post places here inside of Bitwig Studio where we can nest additional effects or nest synthesizers and instruments. So it's going to be absolutely crazy what we're going to be able to do in the future. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to leave you with that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that makes some sense. If you have any additional questions, feel free to post them below. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Take care and you'll hear from me again in the next lesson.